Howdy folks, I'm Brian and here's some Reddit. All right, our first story is titled, Am I a jerk for eating an entire cheesecake and leaving my family without breakfast? Hi Reddit, Happy New Year. I'm a 17 year old female and my family asked me to make a cheesecake to celebrate on New Year's Eve's morning for breakfast. For context, with my family, I'm talking about just my mom, 52 year old female, my dad, a 46 year old male, and my three siblings. 12 male, 12 male, and 12 female. I was very happy when they asked me. I really like making cakes. I said yes and spent my whole two days planning, cleaning the kitchen, and buying all the necessary ingredients for it with my own money. Then it took an entire afternoon to make it, wait for it to chill, and why not decorate it? It's New Year's after all. I really put a lot of effort into this cheesecake, and so I was excited to eat it the next morning. It seemed delicious. I told my parents that I had finished it, I put it in the fridge for the night, and they looked happy. Then I told them how much I wanted to taste it the next day, and I hoped that they felt the same. For context, I'm a little bit fat. I'm not obese, but I'm on a diet. It would be good for me to lose some weight, but... It's New Year's. I can break the diet for a day or two. It's not the end of the world. Well, my parents don't think like me. They looked at me and with a straight face told me I shouldn't eat the cheesecake I made myself with my own money because it was bad for my health. I repeat, I'm not obese. I do exercise every day. And most days I'm very strict with what I eat. And after months and months of not eating much more than salads and chicken, I was hoping to have something I really liked. I tried to argue with them, but they decided that I couldn't eat the cake. I was really angry. I put effort and money into it, and I was going to eat it. This is where I might be the jerk. I waited till everyone had gone to sleep, and around 3 a.m. I got out of bed and went to the kitchen. The title probably gives away what I did. I ate the whole thing out of anger. I'm ashamed of recognizing this, but I was completely unhinged. I didn't even use a spoon or a fork, I used my bare hands. In less than 30 minutes, it was gone, consumed. I started crying because I felt pathetic. Without realizing, I fell asleep in the kitchen with the fridge open. New Year's Eve morning, my family wakes up, ready to eat the cake, without knowing what they would find in the kitchen. Long story short, my parents ended up yelling at me, my siblings crying, and we had to eat plain toast. It's been a few days, but they won't speak to me. Am I the jerk? All right, OP. I'm going to have to say that for the most part, you aren't the jerk. I think where you might be a little bit of a jerk is if you lift the fridge open. But given the context of the situation, I think that you are under a lot of uh, duress, I guess. Your parents should not have told you that you could not eat the cheesecake that you made with your own money and your own time. And I think it's really unfortunate that they did this. It kind of really shows how sensitive of a topic food can be for people. And in a lot of ways, you wanted to have a good New Year's Day and your parents had ruined it for you ahead of time. Now, you're 17 years old and you are basically an adult, so you're going to be making decisions on your own in the future. And you recognize that what you did is unhealthy, so I think, you know, we can for the most part say that hopefully in the future you won't do something like this again. It doesn't sound like you necessarily have an unhealthy relationship with food, but you might also, and so I don't know. Um, This might be something that you need to talk to a therapist about and kind of work through, because this is certainly not a healthy situation to eat a whole cake on your own. So I honestly don't think you should have eaten the whole cheesecake, but I honestly can't blame you. I think probably what you should have done is just told that everyone else that they couldn't eat the cheesecake, that you had made it with your own money, and then eaten it in front of them and been like, nope, you guys told me I couldn't eat uh, cheesecake, so no one gets any cheesecake, or just thrown it away, or any number of things. I mean, I hate wasting food, but if you had thrown it onto the ground (laughs) and watched their expressions, it would have probably been a bit more of a constructive way of doing it. But eating a whole cheesecake, I think, is a little excessive. As for your parents, your parents are complete jerks here. Like, they are making your issues worse here. This is like, this is how you give someone disordered eating. 
or this is how disordered eating develops. Your parents need to lay off of you. Like you're working out every single day and you're eating healthy. One time eating cheesecake is not going to kill you. I mean, it was just a bad time for everyone. And it was all brought up because of their controlling behavior. And I think that that's really sad here. Well, anyhow, take care and good luck. Not the jerk, obviously. But eating a whole cheesecake with your bare hands is not ideal. Should have had a couple of pieces yourself and then threw the rest out. Not the jerk. They asked you to make something with your own money, only to say that you couldn't enjoy it. The way they're prohibiting you for what you can and can't eat is pretty terrible. Nothing hurts your self-esteem more than others making decisions for you at the detriment of your own self-image. I actually think eating the entire cheesecake with her hands is the best part of the story. You do you, girl. Don't let other people push you around. Also, F toxic family members who make you feel fat. Yeah, not the jerk. While it would have been nice for you to share the cake with your family, you do not certainly owe them any portion of the cake. The bigger issue is that you ate an entire cheesecake because you were angry. Going forward, if you find yourself eating because you are mad, please find a therapist. And this is from OP. Yeah, I tried to look for a therapist, but my parents don't believe in psychology. They say it's all a hoax, you know. But soon I'll be turning 18, and I guess I can look for one without their permission then. Wow. Okay, there is a whole lot more going on here, and this actually sounds like a really terrible toxic family. Hopefully OP can get out of this situation and not have their parents uh, (laughs) dictate their life like this. Wow. Our next letter is titled... Am I a jerk for cussing out my wife when she refused to make my mom a sweater? My mom does a lot for us, and I feel like we don't show her that we appreciate her. Realistically, we owe her more than we're ever going to be able to pay her back, a couple hundred thousand. And as of right now, we don't have a car. So she has been picking up my kids from school for the past two days, then they go in person. Also, my stepdad makes good money. So they invite us places we couldn't afford and foot the bill. My mom came over the other day because she had to pick up our groceries. She isn't helping with the car situation because she's done helping financially, but obviously she's still helping out. My wife crochets as a hobby and makes some really cool stuff. She was wearing a cardigan she made and my mom asked if she could make her one. My wife said she could, but she would expect to be paid for her time. My mom laughed and said, Maybe I will take it off your tab, and my wife said she was serious. My mom didn't make a big deal about it, but she seemed annoyed. When she left, I got into it with my wife. I didn't call her any names, but I said she was being selfish, and I can't believe how ridiculous she was being. We owe my mom a ton of money, which she could sue us for. Not that I think she would, but she could just to be petty. She helps with our kids, and my stepdad has me on video committing a crime, I really messed up, but luckily I was never caught. He claims he just kept the video to laugh at. My wife said that doesn't entitle my mom to a sweater. All right, OP, I'm going to rate you as a jerk here. And because you shouldn't be cussing out your wife and you shouldn't be telling her what she is forced to do. I need more information before I can really talk about your wife more. This last bit is pretty revealing where you talk about committing a crime and your stepdad having you on camera. This makes me question why you owe a couple hundred thousand dollars. Do you owe a couple hundred thousand dollars because you crimed? (laughs) Because if you owe a couple hundred thousand dollars because you crimed and your wife didn't, she may feel like she doesn't owe your mom anything. Now, it's really nice that you're mom helps out with stuff it certainly isn't unfair for your mom to be like hey that's a really neat sweater i was wondering if you could make one for me for like a present or whatnot and allow your wife to kind of decide to do that from her point so i don't know why your wife is refusing to make her a sweater but something tells me that there's more to the story than what we're seeing and um i don't really know for sure I think there needs to be a little more clarifying information here before I can judge your wife because uh, we don't understand why you owe $200,000. 
that's a lot of money to owe and to have car problems and uh, other things. Like $200,000 is a tremendous amount of money. So this is a little bit of a boggling situation. I don't know uh, what a good judgment here is. You're the jerk. Your mother would probably be much more grateful if you would get your act together and stop being a burden on her and her husband than she would be for a sweater. In the list of offenses against your mother, it seems a sweater is a pretty low one on the list. You shouldn't take your guilt out against your wife. Your wife is also the jerk, but not as bad as you. Edit. Also, OP, if you think your stepfather is just keeping the video to laugh at and not as leverage against you for future bad behavior, you may be beyond help. That's kind of what I'm thinking. This is a uh, blackmail Taylor territory. <laughs> you're you're being blackmailed. <laughs> not that that's funny. I also wonder, after seeing the bit about crime on video, if they only owe money as a technicality because they are married. If they owe his parents hundreds of thousands of dollars related to property damage or theft or pulling him out of a legal jam solely related on him messing up, I get why his wife may have been bitter if it's being held over her head. I can't call the wife a jerk without knowing what happened on the video to cause the debt. Yeah, and we don't even know if the video is related to this, but there's a chance that it might be. Holy cow. I had to reread how much they owed his mom, a couple hundred thousand dollars. At first, I was going to say that the wife was put in an awkward position when your mom asked her to make a sweater, but then I reread how much you two owe her. On top of that, your mom is picking up your groceries and kids, and your wife and you are both jerks. You're the jerk. Wow, it just keeps getting worse. The wife is the one who crashed the car into a tree while texting, and that's why they don't have a car, and the reason why the mom is having to pick up the kids and deliver their groceries. Oh, I'm going to dig into the comments here to see if I can find some more to the story. They are our kids. Since we got married, I'd say the bad decisions were equally ours, but my wife didn't come from a good background. My mom paid for all of my education, and then I bailed last minute and didn't graduate. So I feel slightly more responsible. The car thing is mostly her fault because she crashed into a tree and admitted that she was texting. Okay. No, it isn't. I think you may have misunderstood, but my mom did not make me pay her back for my school. All the money she loaned us was to buy a house, which we never did, or pay off our joint credit cards. It's both of our debt. Okay. It is mutual debt mostly because we lied about wanting to buy a house and then she gave us $20,000 in two payments for credit card bills. No, she's trying to get disability by faking depression. Well, me and the doctor think it's fake. So I think this is just a mess of a situation and it does actually sound like in the end, <laughs> both of you are probably jerks here. Yeah, I don't know. This is kind of a mess. This is kind of a dumpster fire. Both of you need to get your acts together and, you know, Pay back your family. Holy cow. Your mom is a saint. I don't know why she's putting up with you folks. What crimes have you committed? <laughs> this is insane. All right. And we found the crime. I vandalized my ex's car. All right, folks. I think this dumpster fire is uh done being looked at. My final judgment is that they're both jerks here. <laughs> there, this this is a mind blowing situation. Uh, I don't even know. So I guess my advice to you folks is this: start working together as a team. Work on paying back your debts. Work on getting everything together you know if i don't know what you have for a job but make sure that you are not quitting your job or leaving anything help and support your wife through her depression if she has depression don't treat her like she's faking it you need to start working as a team and working with your mother and your stepdad i think that this is a horrible situation and i think that your parents are just doing the best they can to help you out i'm gonna say of course you shouldn't have cussed out your wife you shouldn't be yelling at each other you should be working together as a team but also if your mother is doing all this amazing stuff for your family 
and your wife is basically being like, nah, I don't want to make you a, uh, a cardigan. <sighs> like, I think that shows a little, some lack of um, support. And I guess, again, it would depends on like how often your mom asks for these kinds of things. I certainly do understand wanting to be compensated for like labor and why your wife would want to be. Your wife could also explain what why she needs to be compensated. Like, for instance, maybe she needs the materials and whatnot to make the cardigan and she does can't afford it as it is because you two are in such debt and such uh, uh, a bad situation. So I think if she actually sat down and explained why she needed something more money to make this scarf, then there would be a good reason behind it. So I think that you need to support your wife. I think if she needs the materials or, you know, assistance with this, then, you know, you can help and aid her. I think that there's a lot of things that you two can do, but I think most of all, you folks should be appreciative of your mom and uh, your stepdad, because it sounds like they're doing a huge amount for you. So yeah, good luck. All right. Our next letter is titled, Am I a Jerk? I'm a 20-year-old male, and I brought up my 20-year-old female sister's only fans in front of my parents. I spent this New Year's with my family. It was me, my twin sister, our older brother, and our half-sister and our parents. We are the youngest, with our brothers being 23 and our half-sister being 24. Me and my sister usually get along, but we've been at each other's throats lately. Me and her are both unfortunately engineer majors at the same college, so it's hard to avoid each other completely. She got mad at me for telling my friends about how easy one of the girls in her friend circles were that I hooked up with, and a bunch of the guys that I was close to tried to hook up with her. I found out about her OnlyFans because somehow one of my friends somehow found out and they've been roasting me about it. I don't really care. I just don't know why my sister did adult acting and that it's possible that my friends have seen it. So New Year's Eve, my sister, for some odd reason, brought it up to my mom and my other sister what I said about her friend. She just kept talking about it and said that I was being a pig and disrespectful to her friend and women as a whole. I eventually got tired of her saying that I was a pig. The words, I may be a pig, but I'm not a adult actor, fell out of my mouth. Our older sister asked what I was talking about, and I said that my twin had an OnlyFans. The festivities were effectively ended. Our parents asked me and my other siblings out of the room so they could speak to my twin. We all went into my brother's room slash the attic, and they both went off on me for doing what I did. They told me that I was being immature for calling out my sister like that. I don't think I did anything wrong. She's still speaking ill about me, and I was getting tired of it. Am I the jerk? So there's a fundamental... There's a fundamentally big difference between what you're doing and what your twin sister is doing. So right here, I guess, is where I kind of have the biggest issue with is that you're doing this. She got mad at me for telling my friends about how easy one of the girls in her friend circle are. So basically what you're saying is you're kind of shaming her friend for being easy, but while going around and sleeping around with people. There's nothing wrong with partaking in adult fun time, all right? Where it becomes a problem is when you start shaming other people because of their promiscuity while turning a blind eye to your own promiscuity. That's a tad bit hypocritical. And then your friends don't help your situation at all. Basically, your friends are making fun of your sister and saying that what she is doing is any worse than what you folks are doing. See, the probable here is that you 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 and your guy friends are being held to a completely different standard about what's acceptable for being promiscuous, whereas your sister and her friends are being held to a kind of outdated standard of oh look they're not they're sleeping around with a lot of people look how bad they are like you don't if you don't see how that's hypocritical uh i just don't know like this is not a good situation 
And the reason why your sister has to hide these kinds of her kind of activity is because of people like you like people like you who turn you know these adult things into basically a way of shaming women is the reason why people like your sister have to keep quiet about the stuff they do because people like you are going to shame women for doing stuff that earns them money even though people like you take full advantage of watching them and uh you know it takes two to tango here so that's the problem this is an extremely hypocritical situation it's an extremely unfortunate that you can't see why you're benefiting on one end and how your sister is you know being basically called out for the same same kind of activity very hypocritical and yeah you're a jerk you're the jerk and a misogynist and a shamer Honestly, I decided you were a jerk when you had the audacity to talk smack on a girl who decided to sleep with you. You strike me as the type of guy who is as promiscuous as you want to be, but judge women who do the same. Broadcasting who you've slept with is the sort of thing you would expect from an immature high schooler, not a 20-year-old college student. And how do you think your friends found your sister's only fans? Yeah. People that watch adult entertainment and shame people who make it are the worst kind of hypocrites. You brought up your sister's OnlyFans because she rightfully called you out for being a jerk and you didn't like being wrong. So petty and wrong. Yeah, that that comment did a great job of explaining it. I probably rambled a lot, but they did a lot better job of explaining it. You're the jerk. Both situations, you valued women as less than you. You bragged about how easy a girl was, and then you went on to judge your sister's only fans. They are not the same thing. She was basically telling your parents and siblings that you're a jerk because of the way you treated women. Honestly, the way you talk about women, I'd be embarrassed if you were my son and wondering why you acted this way. You're an adult. Women have adult entertainment and enjoy it. Get over yourself. All right, folks. I'm going to end on this, and it's an update. It's not as nice of an update as it could be, but it's an update. Update. Am I a jerk for hiring a nanny to babysit my siblings instead of babysitting them myself without telling my mom? I'll link up here to the video. First of all, thank you to everyone who reached out, and that was nice to me. My appendix ruptured, but I'm doing okay, I guess. I'm recovering, but it's very slow and painful. I followed the advice that some of you gave me and told my sibling's dad what was going on and he'll talk with mom. I didn't call CPS though. I can't do that. Also, I followed everyone's advice and I'm currently staying at a safe place with my girlfriend and her family until I get better. My mom has not visited. We talk on the phone and I only get more punished, but well, at least I got to solve everything else, I guess. This is really sad and unfortunate. The fact that your mom didn't apologize after realizing you had a life-threatening illness is insane to me. You could have died, but at least you would have died babysitting. Like, what? And OP says, I'm also super punished. She is really upset at me. Like, I don't even know how the mom can be upset at this point. This is so sad. I'm glad that OP is all right. And that they're recovering and uh, hopefully they can get out of that situation because this is this is a nightmare. All right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, consider giving me a like. If you didn't, consider giving me a dislike, but also consider explaining why in the comments below. Also, if you made it this far in the video and you like this sort of thing, I do a video every single day. And so if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. You'll get more like this every day. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow.